Good morning, right on time comes to you, family. In comes the best of the best, right? My main man, man. Don't draw attention. What are you talking about? We've been waiting for you. Okay. Yeah. I can't start without you. I can't start without you guys. I seen the eagle flying around out there. You can, we have a class up on stage. You're welcome. You can stay here or go up there. I usually go with the young kids, but you can stay down here. All right, Sam, whatever you want to do. All right, Sam. We're rolling. Hello. I can start over. No, that's okay. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Red and Baptist Church. 401, that's a good sound to hear in this church, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 401 Jefferson Avenue. Uh, I was going to give. Uh, uh, they use this in another excuse absence because they were working at the church all night from what I heard. Uh, I'm glad I wasn't working. I'd have blew the whole place up. So. We're still standing. We may have to have uh, service down there, but we're still standing, right? Uh, today in our, uh, can you see that, Sam? Uh, I mean, oh, no. No, I mean, Wait. in that. No, but you never really can. Okay, so. that's good. Uh, today in the uh, in our book of parables, we're still in parables. And this parable, I never even knew was a parable. You know, it's all news to me. Everything I say today, it's all news to me practically. Uh, it's kind of in there, and John the Baptist is in there. The children in the market, it's on page 51 in our book. I put it less. Play tag. Uh, it's 55. Is it 55? Yeah, the children in the marketplace. Oh. Man. You're still yeah, on the mustard seed. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I'm still doing last one. Page 55. Okay. And we find it in the Gospel of Matthew 11, 16, and 19. You got a Bible? Of, you, you, you got a Bible? Of Matthew 11, 16, and 19. We find it in Luke. 7, 31 to 35. We're going to take it to 18 to 35. I'll leave that when we get to that. Uh, 52. Anybody know why this 52 is up there? I'll give you a name today. Anybody know why this 52 is up there? Landon, I know you know. Why are you looking at Why is that 52 up there? How many days is looking to build a wall? Build the wall of Israel. Nehemiah walked in Israel one day. That wall was down 176 years, Mom. He said, I'm going to rebuild this wall. And by God, he did it in 52 days. With the help of God, he did it in 52 days. That wall was 40 feet high, 8 feet wide, and two and a half miles. No modern equipment. I said I could build that wall in five years today, right? There'd be labor strikes. You know, probably be a bomb drop or something, too. Uh, we got to pray for Paul about 8.15. And I got everybody there. Make it a habit to pray every night for everyone. Uh, and uh, especially for Paul, because, uh, you know, Satan attacks our leaders a lot. Uh, he's trying to mess with us, mess with our people. Uh, Bells of Bozo, he, he's not going to win today. But he is, he is a worthy opponent. I will say that about him. And that's all I say about him. Uh, in the children of marketplace, can somebody read Matthew? 11, 16 to 19. If someone can find that in their Bible, Matthew 11, 16 to 19. Anybody? You got that for me, Daniel? Thank you. To what should I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace who call out to one another. We played the flute for you, yet you did not dance. We wailed in the morning, yet you did not weep. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunk, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Amen. But wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. I'm glad he's a friend of tax collectors and sinners. He would never found me if he was like a Pharisee, because they didn't mess with tax collectors or sinners, the people that they were supposed to be messing with. But they were supposed to be saved. They were supposed to be living the law of Moses. They didn't know what the law was. They knew how to wear the fancy uh, little, little robes. They knew how to judge people. They knew how to be hypocrites. Uh, but they couldn't see 
They didn't accept John the Baptist. Any of them that didn't accept him is not going to accept Jesus. You can't because the message was the same. The delivery was quite different. We'll get into that here in a little bit. But uh, that is the parable uh, about the children playing in the marketplace. It looks, uh, and then they say play the animated adults. That's what they're getting at from what I mean. And they're saying uh, the children in the marketplace got kind of kind of open, they would go out and play. Well, they would play a funeral, which I don't think we want to do that today, but they did that then. And that a dirge, does anybody know what a dirge is? I didn't know what a dirge was either. It's a sad song, a song of mourning that they would sing at the funerals uh, back in the day, 2,000 years ago. And the kids would, uh, uh, you know, act like they're playing the flute and stuff, and that was what they did at a wedding, Jennifer. They were all happy and gay, so it was two, uh, two different kind of approaches, and he's pointing out John the Baptist and himself, and I said, let's play tag. Um, you know, you ever play, when we were kids, we play tag. But there was always that one kid that you couldn't tag, right? Oh, you didn't get me, I had a force in me, right? You didn't find me in hide and go see. And Landon, I think you were this guy. You couldn't find me in hide and go see. I was invisible. You know, cops and robbers, bang, you're dead. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm Superman today. You know, that kind of stuff. That's what's going on here. The kids are going, man, I want to play this. I want to play that. Well, it's not the kids. It's the people that's listening to them. And the people that this is mainly directed at is our Pharisee friends, our Sadducee friends, and our scribe friends who had an opportunity right there, live and in person. The New Testament was a moment. Jesus was right there. He was right there. And he's right there now. He's right there now. Uh, and if you could turn to Luke 7, starting on 18. Let me see if I can find this. Just to give us a little background on what we're going to do here. Jesus and John the Baptist. John's disciples told him about all these things calling to them. He sent them to the Lord and asked, Are you the one who we are supposed to come? Or should we expect someone else? So John's got doubt. John the Baptist was the last prophet of the Old Testament. Remember that. He was the old school. He didn't live. He was already dead by the time of the resurrection. But he was prophesied. Uh, can someone find Malachi 3 1 and read that? What is it? Malachi 3 1. It's the last book of the Old Testament. Look. Right before that. Look, I am sending my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you look for so eagerly is surely coming, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so in Malachi, that was written at least 400 years before Jesus, before John the Baptist. He's already telling us, I'm going to send someone in before him. Right? Uh, and he's going to tell the world about the coming of the Messiah. Uh, that's not the only one. It's in Isaiah. It's, it's all through the Old Testament. They were waiting for the Messiah to come. They just weren't waiting for this Messiah. They were waiting for David. They were waiting for uh, eradication of the Romans and all their enemies, the raising of their country to the status that they thought they deserved because they obeyed the laws of God. Well, they knew the laws of God. If they'd have had the right kind of uh, uh, courtroom for Jesus, then they would have knew he was the Messiah. He fulfilled every one of their prophecies. But they didn't want to do that because it kind of messed their power. Uh, the uh, let's go on. So we know we know he was said to come. Jesus called him a, a prophet too. At the very time Jesus cured. Many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers. These are the two messengers of God. 
who has doubt. He's in prison, a father in prison, and they're going to lock her head off. If he's there, I think we're going to have some doubt about Jesus. Why isn't Jesus getting me out of prison? I mean, really, that's the first thing I'm thinking. He's doing all these miracles. Why? I need to be working for the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm with you, John. You know, I was, you know, especially if I was in that cell group. Hey, man. You know, some of Jesus in the steel here, but that wasn't what it was supposed to happen. That wasn't what it was supposed to happen. Uh, so, uh, are we supposed to expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured women of disease, sicknesses. He said, go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on my account. That means blessed are us, because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not stumbling over his words. We're not stumbling over his commands. We're following him, hopefully. And I hope you guys out there are following me too. Uh, after John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What, what did you go and see in the wilderness? Now John the Baptist, he was separated. He was in the wilderness all the time. He dressed like a wild man. He had camel hair on and a big leather belt. Wild hair, he, he ate wild honey and locusts. So, I mean, he wasn't the assimilated guy. He didn't look like you, DJ. He didn't act like you. He didn't talk like you. He didn't walk like you. So, people were uh, afraid of him. Really. He would come out and say, You're a sinner. You need to repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. I mean, this is how he gave the message. You need to come down to the Jordan and get baptized. All right, John. All right, if you say so, I'm going to go get baptized, right? So, uh, you all right today, TJ? I ain't see you crack a smile, man. You've been fighting every week up on the week. No, I know he is. <laughs> man, you throw me off today, man. All right. Just ignore it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, anyway, anyway, getting back there. So, put flowers in front of them. The message was the same. The message was the same. Uh, so, John was. You know, if you had the Pharisees here, they were real conservative. They worked their hands a hundred times. They did this. There were 600, and I think 66, laws of Moses. They, they followed through the letter, but they never lived in them. They were very much hypocrites. Uh, they never allowed uh, people like John the Baptist into, the, uh, into uh, their, their religion. You know, you had to look a certain way, you had to act a certain way. You know, Jesus wasn't like at all, period, you know? He allows, he allows bones like me, uh, anybody. So, when you go, they go in the wilderness, what do you want to see? A reed swaying in the wind? If not, and I was talking to the Pharisees, if not, what did you go out there to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxuries are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet. Jesus called him a prophet. He was the last prophet of the Old Testament. It's a good thing to know, and it's a good thing to remember. This is the one about whom is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare a way for you, uh, and will prepare, prepare your way before you. And you just read that uh, in Malachi. All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. Well, if you weren't baptized by John, you're not going to follow Jesus, right? You can't follow Jesus and... and not pay attention to John uh, because the message was the same. It was about the kingdom of God. Which, well, we're a part of the kingdom of God now. And we'll be the part of the kingdom of heaven later. Uh, you know, and, we, and Jesus is always with us. That's the thing. He's always with us. 
and we get attacked by bells of bozo. But if he's attacking you, something good's going to happen. Something good's going to happen. He didn't bother me for years. I didn't even know who he was. I didn't even believe it was one. You know? He's all over me all the time. Now. Uh, and so there's something going on there. What? I don't know. Uh, so uh, uh, Jesus went on to say, What then can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the parking place calling out to each other. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not cry. Said, that is the parable right there. That is the parable. Uh, you know, we came at you like John, we came at you like Jesus, and you didn't like either one. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And you say he's a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and you say he's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Praise God. But wisdom is proved right by all children, which is saying wisdom will always come to the top. It will all come to the top. Your fruit will always show if you're following Jesus. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, no matter what religion they are, uh, we have to make a stand. Uh, as as uh, Christians, we have to make a stand. The rubber hits the road. We can't be flooded correct. We're not supposed to be. Uh, you know, I'll say something to make a lot of people mad, probably more than every people in the world. But Buddha is dead. Muhammad is dead. Confucius is dead. Jesus lives. Amen? Amen? Jesus lives. And he lives where? Everywhere, especially in our heart. That needed, needed, needed. We have to stand. The rubber hits the road. Are we willing to say, John 14, 6, what's that say? Say it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Thank you, Miss Adams. I appreciate that. Mrs. Adams, to you. Mrs. Adams, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Samantha. <laughs> so you threw me off with the whole thing. Yeah. Well, anyway, anyway, are you willing to tell people that? Are we willing to tell people that? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That's what Jesus tells us, right? No man has seen the Father, bless through me. That's what he's trying to tell the parents. He's saying, look, man. The law is okay. I never came to abolish the law. I came to fulfill the law. Uh, I was reading this thing and it said a rabbi uh, read the New Testament one time. He read the New Testament like he was following Jesus. And he went back to the other rabbi. And they discussed it and they said, uh, what did he leave out of the law? And this rabbi said, nothing. He said, okay, well, what did he add to the law? He said he added himself to the law. So uh, he may have been a converted rabbi. I don't know. He may become a priest. I don't know, but that's the answer. He didn't come to the law. law. And he's trying to get through to these people who think they're superior to everyone because of the religion. Religion doesn't say nothing. You, we can't do anything. There is nothing we can do. There's no good deed. Nothing we can do to be saved by Jesus Christ. And he's the only one who ever lived that can absolve you of all your sins. New start with Jesus. You want to start new today? We're going to talk some more about that. I hope you do. And I hope you come down here. Do we, hey, even though the heat don't work, do we get the heat in the uh, baptism up there? Or do we? Okay. <laughs> Amen. We, we, our our front is not working upstairs. Three of us will continue. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll get that thing warmed up for you. Well, now we're opposite. We got warm water in a cold sanctuary. <laughs> Amen. 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 That's the kind of way it goes, right? That's life. We'll be uh, Let's turn to page 55 of Samantha Correction. Now, this is the, uh, which she needed to, <laughs> uh, this is the, uh, this is a song we're going to sing, and this is our grade today, how we sing this song, and everybody knows it, and everybody knows it, uh, 
the children in the marketplace, we don't read what the parable was. The author says, pay attention to children. We can learn a lot from them. That, that's true, out of mouths of babies. We can learn a lot from children. For example, one of the best known children's songs is this rich in theology. On three, guys. One, two, three. Jesus loves the little children. All the children in the world. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. She's smiling. You've never heard that song? Oh, well, well, thank God. She, look, she's going to get you. Thank I God. know you are going to get her. I'm going to give you that for a minute. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but Joyce ain't going to let you get away with that one because. <laughs> we might have to sing that every week, you know, until you get She probably it. taught it to him. Uh, uh, hey, how you doing, Ryan? Good to see you, buddy. Good. It's my man, Ron, Ryan. It's something there. Uh, Thank you guys for saying Hi, baby. Jennifer, you're A plus. You're a beautiful. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, I didn't throw you off. No, you didn't throw me off. <laughs> Good. I, I, I all was put, well. I wouldn't put my finger up here and all that kind of stuff like that. I, I tell them that all the time when we're practicing. I'm like, put your finger up. I didn't have my microphone in my face. I don't know why. Oh. Uh, so Jesus does love the little children of the world, right? Uh, we, we talk about him in four things. We talk about him. What we have to do, what we're responsible for, you know, we are responsible for the gospel. If we are saying we're followers of Jesus Christ, we're responsible to the gospel. We're not to be politically correct. I'll tell you a story, man. I asked Paul, he said I could tell the story. Uh, Paul, when he was young, he was a little kid, he went to Bible school, and uh, they were talking about turning the other cheek. Okay? And this bullet came out and punched him right in the mouth. Yeah, he's a little kid. He don't know what to do. Uh, I can tell you right now, you don't want to punch him in the mouth right now. Uh, he's a boxer. Uh, and he's in pretty good shape. Don't underestimate your enemy. Never underestimate your enemy. But I'll tell you what, if you punch him in the mouth right now, you're going to get punched by a lot, lot of people. Because we don't turn the other cheek and we don't get beat up on. Jesus meant don't harbor any hate. We can't walk around with hate and revenge. Look, I love you, brother. Don't lay hands on me now. Don't lay hands on me. Bells of Bobo, I wouldn't suggest you going around punching Christians because it's not a good thing. Right, Daniel? It's just right. not a good thing. Don't lay hands on us. But we love you. We love you, right, Sam? We love you. Uh, so we have to stand up. A lot of times we'll put in the back. Uh, is that going to be a testimony to Jesus when we get to heaven? When he says, why didn't you stand up and say, killing a million babies here and there is wrong. It's wrong. I'm sorry, it's wrong. I cannot say that, and I, for years, I didn't, I didn't even think about it. It wasn't even on my mind. But it's wrong. It's wrong. Oh, people don't want to say that. Right? They don't want to say it. They don't want to say little kids are being turned into boys and girls. Little kids, eight, nine, ten years old, are giving them hormones. Why aren't the doctors going to jail? Why aren't the parents going to jail? It's ridiculous what's happened here. There has to be a revival. And I don't want it to sound like fire and brimstone. Do I look and act like fire and brimstone? No. No. Jesus wants us to have fun. And he wants us to love and he wants us to love everyone. And we're just trying to make a better life for everyone. We're trying to follow what he says. The Pharisees, on the other hand, they're like looking at Jesus like he is completely psychic. This guy is saying he's the Messiah? Look at him. He's talking about service to others. He's talking about loving your neighbors. He's talking, he's talking about... Uh, you know, do what you do for the least among us, you do for me also. What he's saying is, if you've got two coats, you're going to the poor and don't have one. He's saying all these things that flew in the face of these guys who assimilated their religion into their little thing. 
If they follow Jesus, he really exposes them. He really exposes them. He offers them the freedom of being free of all their sins and going to the kingdom of heaven. We have, we have a, a uh, luxury that John the Baptist didn't have. Well, you know, we have the luxury that John the Baptist, there was another way to be the result of your sins when you were John the Baptist. And he even said it there, uh, as great as John the Baptist was, He's the least in heaven. Wait a minute. So I mean, I'm going to be higher than John the Baptist in heaven? Uh, no, but it means that I'm more fortunate than John the Baptist. That Jesus died for our sins. It's a free. It's absolutely free. The only thing we have to do, and this is what he's telling you, the Pharisees, you got to quit arguing amongst yourself. When you're playing cops and robbers and you get shot, you're dead. Right, DJ? You're dead. You're dead. When we're playing hide and go seek and you get tagged, or you get caught, you got caught. Okay? When you got tagged, you got tagged. You got to you got quit this. What is it? You're saying uh, God's law is more important than God's son. Does anybody believe that? If I would have heard it, I probably would have been. I would have been the first season break because I would have had a position. And my life would have been easy, much easier being a Pharisee than it would have been following Jesus. Look at those 12 wackos there. You know, went out and got killed. But something happened, right? Something happened. I'm sorry, something happened. Uh, you have an opportunity. You, me, everybody, my grandchildren, we all have an opportunity that other people don't, didn't have. We have an opportunity of absolution of our sins. If we willingly, willingly step forward and lay them out of feet. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. You are the Son of God. I believe that. I give you my sins. I ask for forgiveness. Teach me how not to sin. I want to follow you. I want to make you my liberator. I don't want to carry this burden on my back anymore. I want to be free. And I believe you went to the grave and your blood washed me free. And you came out of that grave and you live. You live now. You will live forever and ever. You are the king forever and ever. Amen. Well, Fred, that sounds real good. Right? That doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Was Peter perfect then? Was Peter perfect? Did Peter deny him three times? Huh? Is Peter perfect now? No. Was David perfect? No. The one they were waiting for? No. Who stole Bathsheba and killed her husband? Wow. Unbelievable. David wrote most of the Old Testament. Psalms is the biggest book in the Old Testament. Paul talked me that. I was paying attention one day, I guess. And, uh, you know, Paul taught me a lot of stuff. Uh, most of what you hear in here, it was said different. But I heard Paul say it. <laughs> so you got John the Baptist, you know, you got Paul, and you got Fred. It was two different guys with the same message. Uh, Jesus loves you. And he wants you to come. We have heat in our baptism up there. If you said that prayer, I mean, you are saved. You are saved. Your life will get better. Do you think your life gets better, Daniel? Do you think, do you think, Ethan? Ethan, my grandson, do you think your life gets better with Jesus? I can tell you for a fact, from the day that I got saved, my life has gotten better. Did I follow him 24 7? No, I didn't. Well, I was going to say, it does get better, but it's a whole package. It's not just good things happening. It's a state of mind. It's a full heart. It's a, an attitude, you know. Yeah. I, you know, it's, I always say it's never easy. Yeah, it's a full. It's never, it's never easy. Uh, he says it's not going to be easy. He says specifically in the book of the that we're going to be persecuted. But I can tell you this. My wife has been sick 
three and a half years, very sick. And the day before she fell and broke her hip, my life was totally different. Was totally different. Uh, the way I walked, the way I talked, the way everything I did was totally different. The only way that I've made it this far with her problems, my problems, and praying for other people's problems is Jesus Christ. There's no other answer. There's nothing else. I have nothing else. And what I want is everybody to have that abundance like you were talking about. The whole package. That's a good way to put this in. We get the whole package. We have an opportunity. Are you going to get it overnight? Are you never going to sin? Are you going to be perfect? No. Jesus doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. He wants a relationship with you. That's where your relationship with Jesus comes in. Jesus, I'm sorry. Jesus, why? We're allowed to doubt. We're allowed to say why. I say why all the time. Why do I have to do this, Jesus? What is it that you want me to do, Jesus? Do you want me to do this? Do you not want me to do this? It's hard for me not to do this thing that I know that you don't want me to do. Teach me. Give me the desire not to do it. In many ways, he's done that. In many ways. Uh, Paul talks about a thorn in the side. And he's, he prays to God. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, he uh, <laughs> said, uh, sorry. Uh, he said that, you know, Lord, you're the only one that can take this away. From me. But he never took it away from Paul. He never took There was a reason that he left that infirmary. Whatever it is. Some people say it was drinking. Some people. Nobody really knows. But Paul was stuck with that his whole life. He prayed about it. And uh, if Paul could be stuck, we can be stuck. If Peter could sin and then we can sin on the side. Tonight. If John the Baptist can have doubt, the last prophet of the Old Testament, then we can have doubt. Right? We're human beings. We're Christians. We do have to stand up when the rubber meets the road. And that means a lot of people don't like what you got to say. But I'm going to tell you, there was many times when I never said anything. I never said anything to people about we're lost. I never said anything when I knew for, for sure what you were talking about is not Jesus' way. That's his biggest sin of sin. Because he's not going to say anything about me when I stand in front of the rock. But if I stand up and say, hey, I say, hey, this is wrong. This is wrong. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He's going to tell the Father, and the same thing for you, fill us. I'm not going to be able to make it. Phyllis told me she was coming today. She just texted me. Pray for Phyllis. Pray for Tina. Pray for Christopher. We miss you guys. Uh, uh, I was really looking forward to it today. Uh, I talked to her yesterday. But listen, guys. Let's just sum this thing up. We're in here. We don't want to fight amongst each other. Okay? We don't want to. We're going to have disagreements. Especially business disagreements. They're going to happen. Okay? Uh, it's gonna be people you don't like, but you gotta like them, right, Miss Brown? People you don't like, you gotta like them, right? If you're a Christian, right? You missed all the good stuff today, Miss Brown. I wish you did it. You've been proud of it. <laughs> uh, she taught Lisa. Miss Brown taught Lisa. Somebody said, "Did you know?" Yes. Amen. Listen, guys. I'm going to shut this down right now, and I'm going to say, Samantha, get that thorn out of your side. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were talking about my fault. Uh, no, I, part of the, I, don't, I think you got it. You're keeping that thorn. I am too, because without it, we just ain't the same people. <laughs> but listen, guys, children in the marketplace, Jesus loves us. We have to stand up for Jesus. Uh, did we read Romans 8, uh, 37? And 38, wait, but I think it's 37. Let me find it for me there, Jennifer. Let me find out here. I think it was, yeah, 37 and 38. We're going to close on this verse, Samantha. 37 and 38. And this is, this is pretty good. This is really good. Listen to this out there. No one in all these things we are, no in all these things that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I can't say nothing after that. Let's get to church.